You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, Marcy had her eye surgery, but not exactly the way she'd planned. How much personal data do you fork over to keep your job? And news stories that aren't news stories, and the unfortunates who have to stand beside them. Well, it's very good to see you. (laughs) I can kind of see you. Oh, you poor thing. You got your eye lasered, and soon you will have the vision uh, of oh, eagles. Oh, no, no. No? No. Uh-oh. It was, uh, it was not lasered. They um, actually slice open your eyeball. I'm going to puke. Don't, don't, don't. And take the lens. No, take the no, lens no, out. no. You're trying to make me sick. Stop, stop. And put a new lens in. Okay, all right. But I can't. I'm going to pass out, really. Well, now you're really going to pass out because I went in for this surgery. When I have to give blood or anything, it's always like this major ordeal because they can't get my veins and my veins roll. I could not, I would not be a successful IV drug user. We'll put it that way. Good to know. Yeah. And so they go (laughs) to start to give me this IV for the anesthesia in the with, you know, the room where they make you hang out yeah. until it's your time to wheel in. Yeah. And she's trying and trying and it's not working. And I told her ahead of time that I'm very difficult to have IVs. So she couldn't get it. Then she finally thought that she had an IV in like between my thumb and my first finger, which is a really weird place for it. And it wasn't hooked up to anything yet, right? So she said, okay, we'll walk down these steps and to the operating room and you can see Dr. Blah, blah, blah. And so I get up and I start to walk and she said to me, do you always walk like that? And I'm like, walk like what? Uh And then boom, I guess I passed out. I fainted. (laughs) Don't remember that part because I wasn't conscious for it. When I came to, they were discussing anesthesia. Like, should they do it or should they do just like do the surgery without the anesthesia and don't tell me or yeah. So anyway, they told me and I had this freaking surgery, like 100% a week. I don't want to hear this. No, 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 no. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what I saw. No, no. It was, it was unpleasant. (laughs) Let me put it that way. It was really unpleasant. But. I didn't tell any secrets because they didn't give me that truth serum anesthesia stuff. So well, that all was my really, secrets are safe. That was really my only question before you made me nauseous 62 <laughs> ways and ready to pass out. Because as you know, my Achilles heel is anything having to do with the eyes. So before you, you did all of that, you could have just said, I didn't tell any secrets and I might not be falling off my chair right now but thanks a lot girlfriend so everyone took very good care of me good yeah even eve and um frankie's taking over everything else so i don't really have to do anything except sit around and be the empress of my own domain well that's kind of nice for you and wait for my eye to stop hurting and no smoking you're not allowed to do that either they didn't tell me that Oh, well, how convenient for you. <laughs> yeah, how, co- how convenient it wasn't on the list. But actually, I'm trying to quit again. I'm going to quit before we go to Hawaii in April. Okay. Otherwise, that flight is going to be pretty miserable. Well, yeah, plus I, I don't want to smoke. Okay. All right. I'll support that. I'll send you, I'll, I'll Amazon you a bunch of gum. I'll take a bunch of Xanax. I don't think I can get that on Amazon. Although I did see in the New York Times an article about the new Amazon Whole Foods uh, acquisition where now they are testing a prototype where they want your palm print and then you can just waltz around the grocery store, the Whole Foods, just loading up your cart and then waltz out and they just bill your Amazon account. No. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, what if... What if Vladimir Putin gets hold of Amazon's servers? And steals our handprints. Yes, and then they could make me responsible for everything from higher oil prices to 
international computer hacking conspiracies. They could say that I robbed all their banks. I Yeah, and devaluated their ruble. Yeah, I don't you like know what? I... all this information. This is enough. I mean, I, I, I've always felt pretty confident in the fact that my handprints and fingerprints, I think you have to give a thumbprint for your passport. But other than that, if I, if I hold somebody up with just four of my five digits, I'm safe. So, so. I, I hold up the, I give them the middle one gladly for something like that. I can't, no, I would never, ever, ever, ever give Amazon any print of anything on my body, except maybe my butt print. I knew that was coming somehow. Yeah. Do you remember when, <laughs> now see, this is how old we are, when Xerox machines, when you couldn't have like a little scanner in your yeah, house. We all sat on it. <laughs> Everybody. This, so you'd get this Xerox machine, and I think that we all sort of hated it because the entry-level jobs that so many of us had were, go make 40 copies of this. And half the yeah. time, half the time the machine would like spit at you or chew up your paper and make it look like- Or didn't have paper. Yeah, or the chemical, or it would make it into <laughs> hamster bedding or it would jam and somehow that was your fault. Only it was paper roulette. It could have jammed on anybody, but then the $3,000 service call was somehow everybody in the office would be looking at you. You're the one, you, 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 your fault. And so it was an act of sort of rebellion. And if you had to work late enough, somebody always would sit with their butt naked butt on the on the Xerox scanner and that that I think every office had a full gallery of people's buttocks such that you would think that no other work got done other than the mandatory scanning of every employee below the executive or as they call it now C-suite level I would give that scan to Amazon in the New York minute I'd say here Amazon you want to scan, scan this, this. But yeah. I am not, I am not, not, not giving them my handprint. So now here's a question. If you're a reporter and your job is to, to write these kinds of text stories, do you get to say, no, I'm a reporter, but I'm not giving Amazon my handprint? I mean, isn't it sort of like being a war reporter where you don't get to say, no, I'm not going to cover the war in Ukraine because I might actually get bombed? Well, do you think every crime reporter that actually commits the crime that they're writing about? No, that's not a good analogy. I, I think that to to go to— I think the hand thing is— No, you're risking your identity. You're not committing a crime. You're becoming vulnerable. It's the well, vulnerability okay, if, in your— No, I would not do that. You would not? No. You would say to your editor in your ear or scan your ear, I am not— or here, scan this thing that I Xeroxed in yeah. 1978. Scan this. I'll autograph it for you. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna scan my handprint for Amazon or anybody else. You would say that as a re imagining way back to your reporter self. Well, you, hell yeah. You would say no. I turned down lots of stuff. Well, I know you turned down the horrible child murdering things once you had to cover that. That was yes. it. And I know you you went to see a, a couple of state executions, and I think you hit your limit at some point. What else yeah. did you say you wouldn't wouldn't cover? Um, there was a lady in a box. What? <laughs> she lived in a box, or she? No, some... she was dead in a box oh. in a closet. Oh. And I said no. I mean, that was pretty much the end of my newspaper career. But that's career. not really news, though. Lady dead in a box. Like, what are you supposed? Well, to in do? a small town, it is. Well, I guess you'd already killed your plumber, so. Yeah, but it, no, it's, I I spent pretty much the last ten years that I was a writing journalist, not an editor, doing entertainment stuff. So when all of a sudden I was told, "Oh, by the way, here's an execution, here's another execution, and here's a bunch of dead children," that's pretty. When I said, "Okay, it's been nice. <laughs> See you later." Left that one. Then the next newspaper job, I spent another 10 years being an entertainment reporter until an editor said to me, oh, well, they found a lady in a box at so-and-so apartment buildings. Is that supposed to be entertaining they, somehow? What, how does that? No. no, she was like trying to throw me on a crime beat, uh. which 
there are plenty of journalists and plenty of people that can't get enough of the crime beat. Me, I'm more of a happy-go-lucky entertainment hang out with rock bands all night kind of writer yeah somehow this does not surprise me in all the years <laughs> i've known you but i i will say that some of the stuff that people are assigned to cover <laughs> i i spend the reason i don't watch local tv news in general is that i spend a lot of time going well that's not news well that's not news that is not that is not news it's just standing in front of wherever the police report came in. And and that's not news necessarily. I mean, occasionally it is. Like if the late dead lady in the box were at the mayor's house, that yeah, would be but- news. But random dead lady in a box is a tragedy for the family and it's crime, but it's not. And, and people seem to just want to send their reporters wherever it's easier. And my favorite comeuppance, did I ever tell you the story of the garbage can on our corner at the park no oh man there was a a tease and I was appalled this was the garbage can literally around the corner from our house there was a park in San Francisco and the news truck pulls up and a woman gets out to do her tease Um, police have been called to the scene of a potential dead baby in this garbage can thrown in this garbage can details at five potential dead baby like and then, and then another half hour, a dead baby in the garbage can. Details at five. Right now, it's a dead baby in the garbage can. And now, did someone open it? Wait up, babe. Oh, this Send, gets good. Now it's quarter to five. Strange breakthrough in the story of the dead baby in the garbage can. And I'm thinking, what strange breakthrough? It's either a, a sure enough. And now the story of how a dead raccoon was mistaken for a dead baby in a garbage can. And I'm thinking, God. And that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. Your baby looks like a raccoon. And then, but wait, but then they had to, to cover their tails. And so you should pardon the expression, given that it was a dead raccoon. And, and so they had to have, like, some expert going, it's remarkable how similar a dead baby and a dead raccoon can appear to the untra... I'm, I'm just dying. I'm howling <laughs> yes, on the floor. Especially those, especially those babies born with all that fur. <laughs> oh, boy. I, what always makes me laugh, and I'm sorry, but I'm kind of a sadist. When I'm watching TV, I see the journalists standing out in the hurricanes. Like, it's really coming down. <laughs> That's... And then they get slammed into a fence. Well, the, the union journalists are starting to rebel against that. I think one too many of them have so. blown overboard. I, I believe they're starting to say, you know, that this having to tie ourselves to an uprooted palm tree is not news gathering. Um, police cra- or they stand outside like with their lips turning blue saying it's 64 degrees below zero here in northern Minnesota. My my favorite of the, of the irrelevant reporter story is the reporter standing at night in front of the closed courthouse. Six hours yep. ago, six. this is the courthouse where six hours ago, Jimmy Jones was found guilty of plucking seven chickens he did not own. And since all you're going to show me is the reporter in the middle of the night in front of the courthouse, I'll be forced to go on YouTube, where somebody will for sure have posted a photo of Jimmy Jones and the seven dead chickens, which everybody would rather see. And that is exactly what has gone wrong with TV news. Thanks for listening to Tory Writer's She Said What podcast. If you'd like to do us a great favor, please leave us a good review wherever you hear this podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Tory Writers She Said What. And you might also enjoy my book, She Said What, A Life on the Air, which you can find any place you buy your books or on Amazon.